So welcome back to another lesson. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking at what we refer to as switch virtual interface. So in our previous lessons, we looked at the first two options when it comes to inter-VLAN routing. So we said inter-VLAN routing was, is just ways we can communicate between VLANs. And the first one we saw was what we, I was referring to as the traditional or the legacy approach. So when I say traditional legacy approach, we're saying that if we have, say, a switch with maybe two VLANs, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, and so VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 are on this switch, on this particular switch, and for them to be able to communicate, we, we, we have to go through a router. And in order for us to do that, um, we have the option of getting a router and then connecting um, our interfaces for the respective VLANs. And so here could be maybe F0 slash zero, which can be used for VLAN 10, and maybe F0 slash one, which can be used for VLAN 20. We also said that because we want to know, the switch at this point doesn't know where this one is going to, which VLAN this is in and which VLAN this is in. So as you maybe this is F0 slash six, F0 slash seven, then it means that if we want to give this to VLAN 20, then we have to change this port to an access port, which will be part of VLAN 20. And same thing applies to this, I'm going to make this an access port, which will be belonging to VLAN 10. And that's how this guy will be able to pass information through it. But again, because this is in VLAN 10, so the IP address will be part of the VLAN 10 address space, and this IP address will be part of the VLAN 20 address space, and this will be the default gateway. We saw that in our previous lesson. But the challenge with this particular approach was the fact that um, it's not, first of all, it's not scalable, meaning uh, for each VLAN we create on a switch, we may need an extra interface on a router, which is a very expensive thing to do for uh, any network engineer. And so um, by default, even though this is a workable solution, normally you wouldn't see people doing this. It can happen, but you wouldn't want to do this. It, it's up to you anyway. So we came up with another solution, which is to prevent the wastage of interfaces on the router. And we said that's the router on a stick. Router on a stick. And with the router on a stick approach, we're using what we refer to as a sub interface. And so basically similar to what we had previously, assuming we have two VLANs on the switch. So VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. Um, we have just one interface which is connected to the router and assuming the router interface is F0 slash zero. So this part of it would be set to a trunk because it's going to be able to pass information coming from the two VLANs. And information coming from the two VLANs means that this trunk is passing information about VLAN 10 and also information about VLAN 20. Now these two VLANs would use the same interface to the router, but the only issue or the only difference will be the fact that on the router um, would have to be able to distinguish between traffic coming from VLAN 10 and traffic going to VLAN 20. And so you create what we refer to as a sub interface by going on that interface, doing maybe no shutdown, and then also doing interface F0 slash zero. And you do dot uh, maybe 10 for maybe VLAN 10. And also you do F0 slash 0.20 for VLAN 20. And so basically for each sub interface, so let's say the first sub interface, which is F0 slash 0 0.10 could have an IP address, assuming the VLAN 10 has an address space of 10.0.0 network. So that means the interface F0 slash 0 0.10 can have maybe an IP address of 10.0.0.1 or 100, and interface F0 slash 0 0.20, which is maybe also in the 20 uh, IP address space, could be an IP address of 20.0.0.10 or maybe .100, depending on which IP address you would want to use for that particular interface. And so this is how um, the concept of sub-interface works. But the challenge here is that, assuming we have a fast ethernet link and a fast ethernet link would have um, 
say 100 megabits speed, which means that if we're going to be doing a sub interface for that particular interface, assuming we're doing two interfaces, then we're limiting, reducing the sizes maybe by half. So we're going to have maybe 50 MB and then 50 MB for the other sub interface as well. Now, what we're seeing here is a case where even though we get an access to the respective VLANs uh, through the router, but the challenge is the fact that um, we reduce in the bandwidth. So if it works, but it's not a good situation or it's not an ideal situation. 